thanks for watching, and today I want to derive the Fourier coefficients of the function e to the x, and from that derive a very neat identity. So, let's start. So in other words, I sort of want to write e to the x as a trigonometric series. Now, of course, in lower division classes, you learn that it's good to express f in terms of cosine and sine. But here, because we're dealing with e to the x, it turns out that naturally, it's better to express it in terms of e to the ix. Because remember, e to the ix is cosine of x plus i sine of x. So we're literally killing two birds with one stone. And therefore, in this case for complex Fourier series, we get somehow that e to the x is the sum from minus infinity to infinity, so two-sided things, of cn e to the i n x. For cn, we want to find that. And just as before, it turns out there's a very nice formula for cn, namely what you do you take the function e to the x you hug it with the e to the i n x but you put a minus sign which i explain in a second so e to the x e to the I minus i n x and what you do you integrate that this time for minus pi to pi because it's always e to the uh, pi n x or pi m x over the interval. And finally, you divide it by 2 pi. And you might be like, why 2 pi? Yes, it's usually pi, but here we have a double sum. It goes from minus infinity to infinity. So it turns out some terms are counted twice. That's why you put a 2. And by the way, uh, why do we put a minus sign? It's always something that really puzzled me, but it shouldn't puzzle you because generally for real functions, you define the dot product or the inner product f dot g to be the integral for minus pi to pi f of x g of x dx. That is for real valued function. For complex valued function, if you remember, you have to put an extra bar. This is my way of passing the bar exam. You just put the bar here. Only life were that easy. Um, and in particular, if you put a bar on e i n x, you get e minus i n x. That's why you have this minus sign. Okay, and why was it so useful to put exponential functions in term, instead of trig? Because otherwise, you would have to do e to the x cosine mx, which is possible. It's just a bit, you know, a, a bit more difficult. But here what we have, it's this nice thing. e to the x sort of got, comes together with this e to the minus i in x. And so all that we're left to integrate is 1 over 2 pi, integral for minus pi to pi, e to the x, times 1 minus i n dx, and that we can just anti-differentiate. So 1 over 2 pi, and then e to the x, 1 minus i n, over 1 minus i n, or minus pi to pi. And let's calculate that. So that becomes e to the, so pi times, sorry, 1 over 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi times e to the pi times 1 minus i n, so e to the pi times minus i pi m. Man, I really should have used m because pi m would be nicer, but and minus e to the minus that, so minus pi times this, so minus pi plus i pi m. And remember this extra factor of 1 over 1 minus i n. 
And let's continue. So, if you like complex numbers, this, you know, this should be enough for you. But remember, one of the things we want to do, we want to derive a nice Parseval identity from that. So, let's just write this in terms of real and imaginary parts. So, one thing we can do, so this becomes 1 over 2 pi, so e to the pi, e to the minus i pi n, minus e to the minus pi, e to the i pi n. Okay. And remember, whenever you have an i on the denominator, it's like having a square root on the denominator. So you multiply by the conjugate form, so 1 minus i n times 1, over 1 plus i n, so on both sides. And let's see how to simplify this. So, uh, this thing, 1 minus i n times 1 plus i n, it's like a squared minus b squared, and therefore we get 1 minus i n squared, and that becomes 1 minus i squared, which becomes plus 1, 1 plus n squared. And here's a nice thing as well. So e to the i pi n, it's just, you know, plus or minus 1. So it's minus 1 to the n. And this becomes, well, minus 1 to the minus n, but which is the same as minus 1 to the n. It's 1 over minus 1 to the n, which is, turns out the same as minus 1 to the n, which is nice. It means you can actually factor this out, and you get minus 1 to the n over pi, and then e to the pi minus e to the minus pi over 2, and we get 1 plus i n over uh, 1 plus n squared. So we're almost there. Okay. And the nice thing is, this thing should look familiar to you. It's not oh my gosh, it's oh my cinch. Okay. That's when we really cinch together. No, we're in cinch. <laughs> I guess in sync. So my, whoa, whoa, what the hell? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties, <laughs> let me, let me, sorry, let me turn on the lights. All right, <laughs> we're back on track. I don't know what happened. But <laughs> okay, all right, so minus one to the n over pi, cinch of pi, and then one plus i n over, sorry. <laughs> I know it's not Halloween, but I seriously got scared. Okay, 1 plus i n over 1 plus n squared. And here's the nice thing. Essentially, you wrote this in terms of real and imaginary parts because this is this times 1 over 1 plus n squared plus i times this times n over 1 plus n squared. And the reason we did that is now that we have our Fourier coefficients, Cn, we can use what's called Parseval's identity to derive a nice new formula. So let's see how to do that. Da, da, da. Okay, so what does Parseval say? It just says, if you take all those Fourier coefficients, Cn, you take the modulus, because it could be complex, like this example, and you square it, it turns out you get 1 over 2 pi times integral from minus pi to pi of whatever your function was, in this case e to the x, squared which is absolutely beautiful because it relates a series, in other words, what's called the little L2 norm with the big L2 norm. So it relates the series with an integral. So it's kind of nice. And in other words, this is how we go from discrete to continuous. So 
But that's not the point of today. Now we have our cn. Remember, cn equals to minus 1 to the n over pi sinh of pi 1 plus i n over 1 plus n squared. Now let's take the modulus. So cn, in fact, let's take the modulus squared. So cn squared, you take the absolute value of that. So this becomes 1. 1 over pi squared, and then sinh becomes sinh squared of pi. And let's see what happens here. So here, you get 1 plus n squared squared. So you're just taking the square. And here, let's see what the modulus is. Well, it's square root of 1. So 1 squared plus n squared, square root. And remember, you're squaring everything. And the nice thing is, this thing simplifies. This becomes 1 over plus n squared over 1 plus n squared squared. So we get 1 over pi squared, sinh squared, pi, and then 1 plus n, 1 over 1 plus n squared. This becomes absolute value of cn squared. Now let's just plug this into our formula and see if we get something nice, which we do. Okay. In fact, let's just use, hopefully this is the only whiteboard we still need to use. So then we get sum from n from minus infinity to infinity of, so this becomes a common term. So you can just pull it out of the sum. So 1 over pi squared sinh squared of pi of 1 over 1 plus n squared. And just use that. So uh, that becomes 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi of your function squared, which in this case just becomes e to the x squared which becomes e to the 2x, the x, yeah, just e to the x squared, that's e to the 2x, and you can just calculate that, so it becomes 1 over 2 pi, and an antiderivative is e to the 2x over 2, so e to the 2 pi minus e to the minus 2 pi over 2, and the nice thing is you can also write this in terms of cinch. So it becomes 1 over 2 pi times cinch of 2 pi. Okay, so what have we got so far? We get that 1 over pi squared cinch squared pi the sum from n from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over 1 plus n squared equals to 1 over 2 pi sinh of 2 pi. Okay. Now, the pi, one of the pi's cancel out. Okay. And you end up with that the sum from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over 1 plus n squared equals to, uh, I guess, one, pi over 2 sinh of 2 pi over sinh squared of pi. Which is already amazing. So we get this identity, which is very surprising because you think this might involve arctangent, but it doesn't. It involves sinh. 2 pi over sinh squared of pi, but you might still be unsatisfied because um, this sum goes from minus infinity to infinity. What if you just want the sum, let's say from 1 to infinity, or from 0 to infinity? Well, not a big problem because it turns out, if you notice, this is like even in n. So the sum just becomes sum from minus infinity to I guess minus 1 of 1 over 1 plus n squared plus the term at 0. So 1 over, well, I guess plus, yeah, uh, 
1 over 1 plus 0 squared plus the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus n squared. But the point is, by evenness, they are the same. So what I'm trying to get at is, in fact, this sum is 2 times this sum plus 1. And you can just simplify this as follows. Then you have uh, 2 times the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over uh, 1 plus n squared plus 1 equals to pi over 2, cinch of 2 pi over cinch squared of pi, and then you can just solve for the sum. So what you get in the end is as follows. Let's see. So let's do the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus n squared. Then just becomes uh, 1 half of this whole junk, pi over 2 cinch of 2 pi over cinch squared of pi minus 1 which is oh my well, god again <laughs> which is already a nice result okay <laughs> we're back so what if we want to have this from 0 to infinity which makes more sense because it would be 1 plus 1 half plus uh, um, let's see, uh, 1 fifth etc etc well, no problem, just add and subtract 1, and so basically what you get is um, the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus n squared equals to 1 half times disjunct, I guess the cinch thing, minus 1, plus the term at 0, which is 1, and then we get 1 half minus 1 plus 1 half times 2. So in the end, we get 1 half times pi over 2, cinch of 2 pi over cinch squared of pi plus 1. Woo! How neat is that? So we get this beautiful sum that equals to something involving cinch and by the way, just a little remark, we integrated from minus pi to pi. Had we integrated from, let's say, minus 1 to 1 of the a similar formula, we would get a, a also very similar result. Here we get the following. Also, we get that the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus pi n squared equals to 1 half times pi over 2. Cinch of 2 over cinch squared of 1 plus 1. So it scales kind of nicely. Before we had cinch of 2 pi over cinch squared of pi. Now we have cinch of 2 over cinch squared of 1. So I think it's really nice. And you know, for different functions, you get different identities with Parseval's theorem, but this is also a nice one. Uh, all right, so if you like that and you wanna see more of that, please click like on this video and subscribe to my channel. And again, sorry about the technical difficulties. It's my first time recording in this room. Uh, all right, thanks so much and thanks for watching.